the retail industry will see its fastest growth since 1984. That's the outlook from the National Research, uh, Retail Federation, which is making a big revision to its 2021 forecast. The NRF now expects retail sales to grow at least 10.5 percent to $4.4 trillion. Join us uh, to talk more about the retail industry's rebound as former Macy's CEO and uh, Chairman Terry Lundgren. He's now founder and CEO of TJL Advisors. Terry, you were well uh, on your way um, before you left Macy's to, to realizing the, uh, I don't know, the multi-channel, the move away from brick and mortar, but it was just accelerated by what we've seen for the last year and a half. Will there be malls? Will there, will there be brick and mortar places to go and shop? Does there need to be? Hi, Joe. Uh, well, first of all, back up to 2019 pre-pandemic and, and the online business was growing then. It was robust and stores that I worked with had, had, had big, powerful businesses. But in aggregate, it was still only 12 percent of the business. It's now rocketed up to something over 20 percent, I think, this, this year, which is phenomenal to see that kind of growth. Having said that, still 80 percent of the business is going to be done in physical stores this year and, and, and next year, I believe. So, so the answer is Yes, uh, consumers will return to some of those pre-pandemic uh, habits. On the other hand, more and more people are more comfortable with shopping for more products, including food products, online. Would you like, I mean, what, what are you advising uh, people? What is the, the line that, that, uh, that most retailers need to follow right now? And it, it, is, it, is it obvious what they need to do, or, or are there nuances uh, in how to navigate the I don't even want to say new normal, but uh, the, the post-pandemic world, how would you yeah. do, what do you, what do you well, advise people? I always start, Joe, with the consumer. And so, so you have to put your, 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 your focus of your business in the mind of the consumer. The consumer is going to decide how they're going to shop and who they're going to shop with and for what products. And so you have to start with that. And you know, for those companies who believed, and there were many, uh, that, that didn't really believe that the online business was as essential, as important for them, or you know, they're just wrong. And so you have, you have to face that reality that the consumer is going to decide. And the way that they're going to make their decision first is probably online. Their research is going to continue to be online, whether they actually go into a physical store or, or actually execute online. They're going to start by looking for businesses online. So you have to have a, a, a robust and, and great exper positive experience uh, initially online. And then it's that overall omni-channel experience. You know, they, they may want to buy online, pick up curbside, or they may want to go into the store and pick up, or they may want to directly deliver. They may want to de deliver today from a, one of the local physical stores as opposed to from a warehouse, you know, 500 miles away. So you have to, you have to enable your business to satisfy the needs of how that consumer is going to shop. And, and, and that consumer has definitely move toward convenience to me the way I want it you know you as a retailer need to be responsive to that so that's my that's my first bit of advice and you know what it's, there's been a bit of a shakeout Joe so so a lot of these businesses have less competition than they had a year and a half ago because either the companies have gone away or or they've become um, less powerful because their balance sheet is not as strong as it once was so they're not on the offense and so there's definitely been a a, a shakeout and I believe those uh, retailers who have made it through the pandemic with a strong balance sheet are in a great position position to arm themselves to, to satisfy those, all those needs of the consumers that I just described. So, Terry, it, just as a, uh, it, let's say you're not a retail executive. You're just an executive. You're just a CEO. You, you see, we, they, we've got some inflation. We're going to get a CPI number today. Uh, we're expecting a big uh, a boost in consumer spending uh, because there's a lot of stimulus. There's a lot of government stimulus. There's a lot of, uh, of benefits that came from the pandemic. So people are flush because they maybe haven't spent anything. How long does that last uh, where, where we see better than, than normal consumer spending? And why are interest rates, I just saw the 10-year at 1.49%. If you were CEO somewhere, what would you be thinking about uh, the, the, all these conflicting sort of signals? 
Well, first, the first thing I'd say is strike while the iron is hot, because, you know, there, to me, there's just no question about uh, this period of time is a great opportunity for those in the business of selling to consumers, and so, whether it's goods or services. And so strike while the iron is hot. Uh, make sure that you're out front and messaging to the consumer, uh, you know, that you're in the game of, of, of satisfying what their, their needs and desires are and, and go now aggressively. So, so this, is a, this is a moment in time when I think it's a pretty much a, a no-brainer for those who have a good balance sheet, as I said, to attack and, and, and uh, grow, their, grow their business. But whether it be base, uh, baseline, physical store, or online, or however they're doing businesses, goods, and services. Having said that, to your, to your question, how long will it last? You know, the, the consumers have record amounts of, of savings at this point. And historically, they haven't saved. <laughs> they haven't kept that savings. You know, they, they, they'll, they'll whittle that down over time. But two and a half trillion, I mean, th there, there's a lot of room for extension for this rally, in my opinion, to go on into next year. So I, I can't predict much more after that, Joe, but I think this year and first half of next year are all very positive uh, on the subject of consum consumption, which, of course, is what's going to drive our, our GDP. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.